Welcome back to another awesome adventurous video. I am back here at the Hagen Museum for a special event, the Stevens Brothers Exhibit. There will be an awesome presentation and some awesome photos that we shall look at. The last time I was here, I took a special glance into Stockton's rich past and history. And now we are here exploring the history of the Stevens Brothers. Let's go inside. It all started with these two, the first generation. Robert is pictured on the left as brother Theodore. They first built a 33 foot sensor board sloop in their backyard. Thus, the Stephen Brothers Boat Builders was born. These large 56 and 64 foot motor launches seen here in front of the Hotel Stockton on El Dorado Street were just a few of the many work boats built by Stephen Brothers for the Kohlberg Transportation Company. Such boats linked Stockton to the agriculturally rich islands of the Delta. This is an enlarged reproduction of an original marine architect's drawing of a 55-foot twin-screw raised deck cruiser. This is the work of William W. Beers. A number of 55-foot twin-screw cruisers were built before World War II. There's an image right there of the old Stephen Brothers building. That building is not there anymore. But there is a different boat building there. Five Star Marina currently sits where the Stephen Brothers used to be. It's pretty cool. And here is a 104 foot air rescue boat from 1942 sitting right in front of the Stephen Brothers building. Once a plane crashed at sea, every minute counted in the race to rescue the crew. These boats, with a cruising range of 500 nautical miles, were designed for speed and were capable of a speed of 37 per hour. I think this is pretty cool. This is a scale model of a 60-foot custom cruiser. This model is the gift of Dick and Donna Stevens. This beauty is well restored. And this is awesome. This is a recreation of the Stephen Brothers boat shops right here. Here's the Spud Buyer special trophy from the 1912 race held in Stockton. This right here is blueprints of a 1931 Stephen Brothers 47 foot cruiser. It was drawn by a company draftsman, William W. Beers. There's a lot of people here. Quite a bit. It's awesome. Today I am going to be talking about the history of the Stevens Brothers and think about shipbuilding in Stockton, Stockton's famous industry. Um, you can't really discuss shipbuilding without talking about the Stevens Brothers. We're an interesting city in that uh, three groups of brothers have all had shipbuilding firms in Stockton. The Colbergs were the first, followed by the Stevens Brothers and then the Soviet Brothers. The Roostaller Brothers never built anything larger than a Mattel model. Um, so let's get started. Uh, our heritage, it, it's interesting, we are, we're linked physically, 
emotionally, spiritually, with the, uh, the river. And Charles Weber, who settled his land grant in August of 1847, realized the importance of river transportation. That's why he started his settlement right along this, what would become the Stockton Channel. And he also named it after a, uh, a naval officer, Commodore Robert Field Stockton. Um, interestingly enough, they had met one another at the end of the Mexican War, and Stockton was asking Weber about his plans, and he said, I have a land grant in the uh, Central Valley, I plan to settle that, and uh, hopefully it will grow into a great city. And Stockton said, you know, I have a lot of connections back east. My grandfather signed the Declaration of Independence, and our family goes way back in New Jersey. Um, I plan to go into politics, that should have been warning right there. <laughs> but he said, you know, when I get back east, anything I can do to help you out in your city, um, you just let me know and I'll do that. And like so many politicians, once they actually get back into Washington, D.C., you never hear from them again. <laughs> That's the truth of the stuff. Interestingly enough, Weber in his later years said, I should have used one of my fancy names for the city instead of Stockton. And one of his favorites was Castoria, which uh, related to all the beaver that were very popular in this area. Watch out, come in. Um, and what was, I'm glad that that did not come to pass because enough of you are probably old enough to know about Fletcher's Castoria. And the city of Stockton has a bad enough <laughs> so, Weber Settlement really didn't do much for some time until the gold rush made it one of the three most important cities in California. And people coming to mine in what were known as the Southern Mines had to come through Stockton. And in 1850, the shipbuilding industry was born in Stockton too, and the first boat was slid into the Stockton Channel. And after that, the needs of the miners made it imperative that enough river going craft were being built here they can find access somewhere else. And it was during this time that Stephen Davis opened up the first big shipbuilding operation on Lindsay Point. He had learned his craft from the coast. I don't know what that is. Um, I hate this lapel. But you can still hear me? I hate uh, Stephen Davis was churning out any number of watercraft, some of uh, which found their way over to Russia, uh, interestingly enough. And it was kind of a harbinger of what would happen. Uh, eventually, Stephen's brother's boats would be sailing basically in the seven oceans. Following the World Rush, the impetus for shipbuilding focused upon the grain trade. The uh, Great Central Valley was awash with all of these thousands and thousands of acres of various grains, and a lot of it was transported back to Stockton for storage, for processing, for shipment out of the area, and a number of vessels like an area here, pictured here in front of the Sperry Mills on the south bank of the channel, were actually being built here at Stockton by a number of different shipbuilding companies. The grain trade would change um, in the late 1880s, 1890s, there was more and more efforts to reclaim the lands to the west of Stockton, the San Joaquin and Sacramento Delta lands. People knew that they were extremely fertile, but there was a huge drawback when the spring runoffs would come through. These areas would be flooded, so they had to come up with some way to build levees to protect these lands, convert them into islands that could not be inundated on an annual basis. And so, at the John Grant shipyard, which was located where the ports now play baseball, uh, he began building these California side dredge clamshell dredges. And these floating dredges would go out and they would take the soil from the middle of the river and scoop it up in these huge buckets, sometimes with a capacity of nine cubic yards, and deposit them on the banks of the islands. And this is the same levee system that protects the islands to this day. And so we have this, the next gold rush, as some people wanted to advertise it, was the transformation of agriculture in our area. Um, 
some advertisers lapped into apocryphy when they would say you could grow out anything out in the Gulf of Lands. In fact, if you throw doorknobs, you'll grow doors. That wasn't quite true. But it opened up this range of orchard and row crops that heretofore were not being grown in California. A lot of that also had to do with the incorporation of irrigation in these lands. And so this, a great deal of this agriculture came into stock. And then again, river transportation uh, facilitated this. You're looking at, uh, that's about Overado Street, and you're seeing offloading from one of the river boats uh, a crop of onions. This is the first of the three rubber groups that I mentioned, the Colbert brothers. William and Henry Colbert began building boats in Stockton um, on Weber Point, actually, it's the first boatyard. Um, they began building boats, but then they realized there's a lot of money to be made in the transportation business. So in addition to their boats, which this is on Weber Point, one of their largest, um, they needed to expand. They couldn't satisfy all of their building needs. And this is the head of navigation. And what you see, oh, I'm trip, but these are cold bird launches lined up. And they're essentially water taxi taking the people and sometimes goods from Stockton out to the islands and vice versa. Well, as their transportation business grew, they realized they needed more ports, so they turned to a second group of brothers, the Stevens brothers, to begin helping them out. And here you see, love this photograph, it's the old hotel Stockton, right here. This is the old Masonic Temple, I think it was going down about 1922. But each one of these vessels is part of the Colbert Transportation Company, but every one of those vessels was built by the new brother duo, um, the Stevens brothers. First generation, Stowe and Roy Stevens. Stowe, people think I misspelled this. Actually, it was Theodore, but he went by so. Um, interestingly enough, their father was a their grandfather was a pioneer in San Joaquin County, and their father was a farmer out in the Linden area, but they moved to stop not too far from the Hagen Museum. Not too far from the stop of the channel. So the boys had an opportunity to see the variety of watercraft that was operating up and down the Stockton Channel. Their uncle, Cy Morin, actually had his own transportation business. Uh, they would work occasionally in summers on some of his boats. So they were very familiar with boating, uh, river transportation, but they also loved it. And they built their own 30-foot uh, centerboard sloop in their parents' backyard. Uh, in 1902, they got a moving company to help them take it down to the channel where they launched it. And they, they were having a grand time. They sailed it uh, through the San Francisco Bay down to Santa Cruz and back. Um, but it drew a great deal of attention. Um, and it also led to their uh, next, uh, or their first commission. This is a photograph of McLeod's Lake. And this is their first commission. Uh, called the G Wiz, completed in just six months, hence the G Wiz. Uh, and there was a uh, duck club uh, that uh, saw wonderful folks that these two young kids were turning out. So they also commissioned this launch that would take their members out to their duck club out in the Delta, known as the Queen. The Queen actually kept sailing various waterways up until 1941. We have a photo of her just about in her last days around Inverness. <laughs> and there's the queen just before she is launched. Um, people who lived in the neighborhood weren't all that happy with the young boys hammering and banging away, building uh, first Dorothy and then Gene Wiz in their parents' backyards. So the boys thought, yeah, we better get close to the water. Our boats are getting bigger and it's getting to be a pain to carry them down to the water. So there was an abandoned grain barge, the Oso, that was permanently moored on the north bank of the channel, and they thought this would be a perfect staging area uh, for our queen. And so they were able to launch that. They launched a number of other vessels here. This is about 1903. And by 1910, they had enough money raised and enough future commissions to realize 
it's time for us to start building our own boat yard uh, at the foot of Yosemite Street by Warren and Mark Henry Chandler. That was in 1910, they built their, their first structure. Uh, this photo, however, is from 1915 because this is the, I think, 44 foot launch that they built for the family called the Sea Urchin. And uh, so it dates this photo to at least uh, 1915. Um, while they built, their first boat was a sailboat. Um, the most of the boats that they were building were power boats. And they weren't really engineers themselves, but they profited from being in Stockton. And there was the Samson Iron Works that was building marine engine, gasoline engines. So they had that source, but they also had the expertise of the various people who worked at Samson to help them uh, work out various engineering problems. And here we see a a rather large Samson Marine engine, probably, uh, probably going to be incorporated in one of the uh, tow or tug boats that they built. Speaking of which, this is uh, um, one of the many tow boats, tug boats that they built for various companies. This one was built for the uh, Japanese uh, agriculturalist Norishima, also known as Hato King. He also bought, a, I believe, it was a total of six boats from Stevens Brothers over the years. And the launches, again, all of this is tied in directly with the Virginia agricultural uh, areas out of the Delta Islands. This is another one of their launches. We can see it's basically a water taxi people uh, out there on the alfresco deck and some people on the inside. Um, we have one of their drawings. We have a lot of the original Stevens Brothers drawings. And inside it's called the ladies' cabin covered and then the men get fed for themselves out there uh, and you know, it's really nice weather uh, during most of the ride. Um, beginning around 1909, 1910, they started building a number of these very, very fast, they referred to them as speedboats or runabouts. And these were also known as commission merchant boats. And it was that throughout the Delta Islands, you had a lot of farmers that were growing a variety of crops, but the people who were buying the bulk of that were the various uh, companies in San Francisco. And what they would do, a lot of these commission merchants would sit around the bar at the hotel stock and run through places like have public telephone. They wait for a call from their bosses saying, I want you to lock in farmer so and so at you know, 10 cents a, a bushel for potatoes or onions, or any other crop, setting a price. Well, it was imperative then to get from the hotel Stockton out to that particular farmer's land, get him to lock in at that price before somebody else did. So, these commission merchants wanted faster and faster and faster boats. And the Stevens brothers um, were up to the challenge. This particular vessel, the Fred Langmore, was built in 1911, and it actually set um, a record for the speed from Stockton down to San Diego in 23 hours. Um, and it was in December, too, so it was uh, quite the feat. But once, the Stevens Brothers also knew how to work publicity, and this was, wouldn't be the last publicity stuff that they would uh, pull, but it was great for sales. People, uh, the commission merchants, the only boats they wanted now were Stevens Brothers, but quite a number of these were built. And they ranged in size from about 22 feet up to 20, uh, 32 feet. Uh, the majority were like the Fred Landmore, about 28 feet. And they were also a competitive group of people. And whenever there was a regatta along the Stockton Channel, all of the commission merchant boats would uh, uh, vie to see who had the fastest boat and bragging rights. More importantly, they would be able to get out there and get more commissions than anybody else. They also built freighters. Uh, these boats were designed to carry produce into the uh, Stockton area, so you can see, I'm not sure if this is potatoes or onions, but this whole lower deck portion is available to load the crop on board. You have some cabins in the pilot house above. They built a number of these freighters. One of my favorite photographs, for you folks in the back, it's going to be more difficult, but um, 19, around 1925, Delta King and the Delta Queen being built here in 
doctor. This is this doctor Ironworks right here. Stephen's brother, and by this time, Colbert. Colbert moved from Weber Point uh, to be right next door to the Stevens brothers. Uh, Stevens brothers here, Colbert right here. You can see quite a number of vessels. But what's interesting, quite a number of these ve vessels either could have been or were built by the Stevens brothers. This is one of those freighters. This is a tug. This is one of the launches. They also built a number of barges, both barges. Uh, that had to be pulled, and they also had uh, some built in auxiliary power themselves. And I feel that quite a number of the boats that you see lined up right here are some of those commission merchant boats. And they did not build bridges, but by this time, John and Brand had moved from uh, Banner <coughs> down to the Stockton Ironworks, and he's either building or repairing bridges here as well. I like to call this the high water mark of Stockton. Um, based on a lot of the knowledge they gained by building these commission merchant boat, um, Thode Stevens decided to um, bridge the gap. By this time, this is about 1925, and Americans are falling in love with the automobile, more roads are being built throughout the Delta. You have bridges that now connect to the various uh, islands, or you have ferries. And so the commission merchant boat probably not going to carry them through for many more years. So they have to adapt and they decide, let's get into pleasure track. Americans are not only falling in love with automobiles, they're falling in love with speed in general, especially on the water. So he designed the Stevens 26 foot runabout. And this proved to be a very popular boat. Had a lot of competition on the East Coast from firms that were turning out these mass produced vessels, but each one of these uh, vessels was handmade. Cyan antique, um, Philippine mahogany, and white oak. And teak is especially nice because it takes a finish very well and it also has property so it doesn't dry out as fast. We have a wonderful, there are a number of 26 foot runabouts that still exist, one of which probably never sail again unless we, you know, have part of California falls into the ocean. I get for the nibs sailing in the 26 foot runabout out of the <laughs> They also, at this time, this is uh, uh, before the Depression, uh, they have a number of stock vessels. Sometimes they're called semi-stock because they share the hull and engine design. But the interiors were completely customizable. And this was a hallmark of Steely Brothers throughout their entire uh, building career in that the customer came first, the customer came in, and no matter what the request was, for the most part, um, it would be honored by the Stevens Brothers. So they could take these two stock models, the 39 and the 47 foot, that the number refers to the LOA or the length overall, and they would build them, build them. They, they didn't have to waste a lot of time with the initial design, and more time would be spent customizing the boats for them. Um, and they would go through a number of different stock vessels uh, over the years. Um, they would go from the 26 to 39 and 47. They got a little shorter over the years, and we'll see some of those in a minute. Their main construction shed in 1930. And the Depression really hasn't kicked in yet. Uh, and so you see a number of vessels. This is a larger vessel. This might be a 47, um, probably another 47, maybe a 50. But then you have some stock models around there as well. Early years of the Depression, not really all that difficult for the Stevens brothers. Um, they introduced a new semi stock uh, model um, about midway through about 1935. The uh, 34, and you, and you can see they love to advertise early on. Towards the end, when the boats were very high end, they didn't have to advertise because if you really wanted a wonderful yacht, you could come to Stockton and uh, Stevens Brothers on your own. But you can see the interiors, and again, the, this is a stock vessel, but if you did not like the arrangements of the berths or the head or the galley, all you have to say is, can you change? and they were most accommodated. A number of East Coast buyers were starting to stand up and, and take notice of what was going on in these uh, 
uh, with the Stevens brothers. They were hearing more and more about them. And the Stevens brothers wanted to cash in on uh, a potential new market on the East Coast. So in 1932, this vessel, the uh, uh, May Willow, was built in 1931, but they shipped it off to New York for the big boat show. And it was the hit of the boat show. And all of a sudden, a lot of East Coast buyers were out saying, um, I didn't know what these guys back there on the West Coast could do, but we are going to uh, definitely contact the Stevens Brothers. Um, and some of the vessels, they had the stock vessels, but if you came in and you said, you know, uh, I really like a larger boat, uh, the Sea Dog 55 footer, um, and 62 foot Manana 2, you'll notice that the Golden Gate Bridge is not quite complete in this photograph. Yeah. Uh, and these are a couple of shots of the interior uh, with a telephone on the, uh, the dresser there. Fireplace. I don't think of a fireplace normally when I think about a boat, but you know, uh, if, it's, if you're docked and it's a cold night out there, might be nice. Uh, and then the largest boat that they build during this time is 64 foot Folly 2, and you can imagine it's very well appointed on the inside as well. Mid-30s, some of their boats are starting to come down. And what's interesting, um, they're building anywhere from 18 to 20 boats a year, leading up to the worst year of the Depression, 1933. They only built three boats uh, that year. And over the next three years, they would build only a total of 10 boats. That is going to do it for today's video at the Hagen Museum. I hope you guys enjoyed the little presentation and history of the Stephen Brothers. The exhibit's going on from now to September 29th. If you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more future uploads. Until next time, see you guys in the next video.